Hey guys, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. It's good to be back with you as we get into episode three in our Survival Quick Tips series. In episode two, we discuss sheltering in place during a grid down disaster and the nine things preppers often forget until a disaster happens. Now, if you haven't seen episode two, make sure you circle back around and check that out soon. So today, we're gonna continue moving forward as we discuss the truth, lies, and myths about bugging out and land on the five keys to bug out success. Before we're all done, you'll discover the fastest, easiest way to plug your emergency and disaster preparedness gaps in less time than it takes to watch two movies on Netflix. But before we get into all these vital topics, make sure to smash that like button Click the little bell icon to get notified when we post every video in this important, free, weekly survival and preparedness series. Okay, let's jump into episode three of Survival Quick Tips and talk about bugging out. Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of Survival Quick Tips, which is part of the Tiny Survival Guide Learning System and our full Tiny Survival Master Class online training. In this segment, what Dave and I are going to do is take a few minutes to break down a vital emergency preparedness or survival topic that's found in the Tiny Survival Guide. And before we're all done, we're going to share a few action steps for you to put into practice today. Okay, so everybody, today we're going to be referencing section C2 in the Tiny Survival Guide, which is all about bugging out, and we're going to go through five keys to bug out safety and success. Let's get started. Okay, Craig, to get us started, I like to make sure that we're always synced up with our audience, and there's a lot of different ideas about what bugging out is and what it isn't. So in a practical sense, can you take it, us through what bugging out is and what it is not? Well, the big thing that's problematic is that what most people refer to as bugging out is some romanticized idea where you throw a pack on your back, head out into the woods and live like Jeremiah Johnson or some nonsense like that, because that's, not going to be possible for virtually everyone that exists today because we are so dependent upon our homes and stuff of that nature. Unless you're already living off the land in some way, shape, or form, just running off into the woods is is foolhardy at best. It's not one of those things where you're going to be able to put a pack on, throw 100 pounds on your back, and just run off into the woods. I taught a class this past weekend that basically was that exact scenario. And some of the guys weren't able to carry their pack half the day, let alone the full day of training that we had on Saturday. Okay, so before we get into these five keys to bug out success, Craig, let's just uh, get people up to speed with what our thoughts are on when we should consider bugging out and when we should not. I think the first thing to understand is that it's all about your life and when it is in serious danger. And you should bug out from your location, whether it's your work location, your vehicle, or your own home, where it is that you're sheltering in place whenever your life is in serious danger. A secondary consideration is whenever there's insufficient means for you to provide for your physical needs. Think about it. I talked about safety and security in that last segment. I think that's vital. Number three would be when all other options are exhausted and you're not getting the things that you need your resources, whether it's water, food, or safety, or what have you, all your options are exhausted and you must go somewhere else. Also, and this is where critical decision making comes into play, when bugging out increases your chances of survival, that's a big one. And then last but not least, when your life is in danger through natural or man-made disaster, literally, again, just re-emphasizing that if your life is in danger, it's gonna be time to move out. Okay, Craig, so let's get into these five keys of bug out success. So number one, be situationally aware. Vital, absolutely vital to paying attention. And this is why I developed a whole 
a whole lesson on situational awareness in the master class. But the keys are knowing the obstacles to being situationally aware. A big one is focus lock, not paying attention to anything other than what's right in front of you. If that's focus lock is when you, a phone is a perfect example. You're looking at it, not paying attention to what's going on around. So situation awareness is key. It's like gathering intel for yourself. The more information you can get and intelligence you can get, the better you can make decisions. Critically thinking through what plausible events would cause you to pull the trigger and bug out. What do you have to say? I think it's risk versus reward, David. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things where we have to consider the risk associated with bugging out. We have to have the critical thinking skills to be able to assess those things and you know, some buzzwords to look for risk assessment, risk management. I do that before every single class that I teach. And I do that as a means of teaching people how to start going through risk assessment. We should be doing that all the time. Uh, I drive my wife crazy. If we're going to a large city to go out for dinner, I do a risk assessment in my head. I don't necessarily go through all of it with her, but if something's going on that I think she needs to be aware of, then we'll discuss that on the way over or before we go. Okay. One key thing that we need to be considering and considering really well is where will we go? Yeah, I think considering where you go should be done now. That way you have a contingency plan to move out. It shouldn't be you just, move. well, there are times to get off the X. You know, self-defense is a perfect example. Somebody's going to bring harm to me with a firearm or unarmed tactics or some of that nature. I I must move. If I can remove myself from the situation, yes. And I don't have to have a place to go. I just have to move. Same thing is true if a lot of violence is coming. I've got to move. If there's a, a rioting crowd that's moving towards my house, it's probably best for me to either be ready to secure it there, and that takes a lot, or to simply remove myself. And removing myself, then go to that bug out location. But the first thing is to just get off the X, move. Okay, next. How will you get there? You've got a plan on getting there on foot. You've got a plan on everything not working and traffic being backed up for, and stuff of that nature. Perfect example is my wife and son went down to Myrtle Beach several years ago, and they had severe storms that were coming in as they were going. So we made a plan for them to exit that, that uh, vacation home on foot in case everything got swamped and they couldn't leave. And so we made that before they ever went down there. And so they were ready for it before they ever got there. Now, how about if you are able to take a vehicle, what sort of routes and what sort of pre-planning should you do to make that plausible? I th I'm a big fan of map and compass skills in hiking. I'm also a fan of map and compass skills for road uh, hiking as well. Obviously, GPS units are fantastic, but technology will fail when you need it more often than not. Therefore, have I, I, there's an atlas and gazetteer that's made for every state in the United States. And so at least have something of that nature so that you know the roads and alternate routes, mark them out from locations where you're no going to be, you know, if I'm vacationing, if I'm recreating, if I'm going on vacation, whatever it is that I'm doing, I need to have routes out of that area already pre-planned and oftentimes drawn on the map. That's what we did for my wife and son for Myrtle Beach is we literally had highlighted the roads that were options for them to leave. Okay, make sure you have the gear and provisions you need and the knowledge, stamina, skill, and safety concerns taken care of to safely make the journey. That's a lot. I think we jammed about 10 of them in this one. So pick up on anything you want here. I think the big thing there is to recognize what your limits are and uh, make as much contingency planning for bugging out as you possibly can. Meaning if you could create the ideal situation, create that ideal situation in your head and find a location to go to and always, always, always have contingency plans with what you have planned does not work. You must be flexible. All right, everyone. We are out of time for this survival quick tips segment. But in a moment, Craig and I are going to continue our conversation with some bonus bug out content for our tiny survival masterclass students that will include six life-threatening bug out mistakes you need to avoid.
So everybody, if you want access to this additional content, and why wouldn't you, right? You do, right? <laughs> Take the fast track to identifying and plugging your survival, safety, security, and basically overall emergency preparedness gaps now before it's too late. Use the link in the description below or go over to tinysurvivalmasterclass.com. Now in that class, we're gonna go over the viable methodology. I talked some in this particular quick tip on critical decision-making as well as situational awareness. We have lessons dedicated to those aspects of survival training. Those are often overlooked. They're not in the Tiny Survival Masterclass. That's another big reason that you need to get in there. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening for more survival quick tips. Share this content with others that you care about, those that you love, those that you care about, those that you want to have a better life and be more prepared for emergencies. Hey, it's free, absolutely free to do so. And they'll love you even more for thinking of them and helping them out. All right, everybody, I think that's it. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep it simple, stay positive and be sharp. For your convenience, I've placed links to everything mentioned in the video description. Make sure you smash that like button and click the bell icon to get notified when we post new survival and preparedness content. To support this channel and encourage us to continue to create new videos and sweet, innovative new gear, go check out our new line of MSK1 knives and EDC gear over at ultimatesurvivaltips.com. And last but not least, don't forget to go check out our five-star rated podcast, The Survival Show, on all major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know.